So this is our next topic, nomenclature. Oh, it's not chapter two, sorry, I gotta change this. This is just naming things in chemistry. I have two um, flow charts. I have a colorful one, it's so pretty, and I have a more comprehensive one, but not colorful. This one is the one we'll use because it's more comprehensive. All chemical formulas, if the first, you're given them, if the first letter is an H, it's an acid. And we'll cover acid nomenclature when we get to acids. It'll be second semester. So we're gonna skip this arm of the flow chart. If the first letter is not an H, it's not an acid. So you go no, and then you ask yourself, are there two things in the compound, two atom types? Yes and no. If it's yes, you go, is a metal present? Where are the metals? Which side? Left side. Left side, good. So if it's on the left side, there's a metal present. If there's not, we do this naming scheme. If there is a metal present, you say, does the metal form more than one cation? Metals form cations, positive charges. I'll show you how, to, how we know that. If the answer is yes, you use this naming scheme. If the answer is no, you use this one. So let me show you those individually and slowly. There's the colorful one. Back in the day, we used to have to memorize. We don't anymore. So we can just go, no, we don't need that anymore. Let's just review, though, chemical formulas. Here's one, C3H8. You don't have to know what it means. You just have to be able to know what these subscripts mean. So first of all, the subscripts are the number of atoms in the element or of the element in the compound or the formula unit. Ionic compounds, base unit is called a formula unit. You know an ionic compound. I can guarantee all of you know this compound. Do you already know what it is? What's our go-to ionic compound? Sodium chloride, table salt. So sodium chloride is not a molecule. So we don't say a molecule of sodium chloride. The base unit is called a formula unit. So you already know one go-to formula unit of a binary compound. So sodium chloride is our go-to ionic binary compound. Yay, we've got one under our belt that we don't have to relearn because we already know it. So the subscript only applies what immediately precedes it. So that means there's three carbons and eight hydrogens in this compound. Okay? I think you already knew all of that. How about this one? What's this element called? Aluminum. How many are there? Two. Two. This is a polyatomic ion. It's in our handy dandy periodic chart. We've got all of the polyatomics we need to know in this little chart. Can you find this one? SO4 with a two minus charge. Sulfate. How many sulfate ions are there in this compound? There's three sulfate ions in this compound. All right, so there's three around two aluminums. What group is aluminum in? Group. Uh, subtract 10. Okay. Group 3. That is the charge. Everybody look up at me. Group 3. Group number is the charge of the metal. So that means aluminum makes the charge of plus 3. The metals are always positive. And sulfate, how do we know what the charge is? We look on our handy dandy chart. So what was the charge on the sulfate ion? Negative 2. So we always write the cation first, which is the metal, if it's a, a metal to a nonmetal and then the anion second. And then these brackets denote that there's more than one of these sulfate ions, so in fact there's three of them in this compound. And it only applies to what immediately precedes it, just like the three only applies to the carbon. Okay? So here's some common anions and cations. I'll tell you the ones you, you need to know. Group one, always form plus one cations. Group two, always form plus two cations. Aluminum is always plus three. Boron's a nonmetal, so remember it's a metalloid, it's a little different, but aluminum you can always count on being plus three. Nitrogen, for the ion, nitrogen ion is called nitride, it's always three minus. Oxygen and sulfur are always two minus, and the halogens are always one minus when they're ions. So negative ions are called anions, positive ions are called cations. Okay? You'll always have your periodic chart. You can always refer to it. Oh, what group is strontium in? Well, where's strontium? Group two. So the ion of group of strontium is always positive two. How about chloride? 
Where's chlorine? Group seven. Group seven. So the chloride ion is always minus one. Okay? That's the key to understanding this. You'll always have your periodic chart. These guys have multiple. I'll show you how to do those in a minute. So binary compounds just have two things. Binaries mean two. So type one is binary. Um, type two is binary ionics, but with a little added um, special thing. And type three are molecular. They're not ionic. They form molecular bonds, which are covalent. But you already have one of each of these at your disposal. You already know one. So the binary ionics are the metals that always make a cation of the same charge. That is group one, group two, and aluminum. It's always positive one, positive two, and positive three, always. So those, they only have one charge, the charge that is their group number. These have various, and those are the transition metals on these colorful periodic charts. It's the yellow field. I'll show you how to figure that out. It's really easy. And then find, oh, here's some examples. We read these as their charge, chromium-2, chromium-3, cobalt-2, cobalt-3, copper-1, copper-2, iron-2, iron-3, etc. That means if I say it in English words, you know right away which charge it has. If I say tin-2, I don't mean like T-O-O, -O, I mean tin with a plus two charge. So that's right here, okay? And then finally, molecular compounds, that's a non-metal to a non-metal. You already have one. We're breathing it out. CO2. This is a molecular compound. It shares molecular, com I'm going to abbreviate compound like that. This does covalent bonding, so it shares. This is ionic. It steals away. So these guys, they share. So they have a different bonding structure. We'll get to that later. Okay, let's look a little closer at the first one, the easy one. This is the ionic compounds that metals are in group one, group two, or aluminum. They always have group positive one, positive two, and positive three, respectively. So you just read left to right. You say the cation first, and then the anion. And for the anion, you put the suffix ide, I-D-E. So if this is chlorine and you turn it into the ion, what do you call it? Chloride. Chloride. So you just read left to right. Calcium with a plus two charge. How do we know it's plus two? because it's right here in group two. How do we know chloride is minus one? Because it's right here in group seven and they always get a minus one charge and then they have noble gas configuration. Now if you have a positive two charged particle and you, whoops, positive two, and you associate it with a negative one anion, to make this thing neutral, how many of each one of these would you have? We need two of these. So now, in your mind, do this. A negative, sorry, it's a negative one particle. There's two of them. So there is like negative two from the chloride and positive two. The whole thing's neutral. In our class, it's perfectly okay to write the charge up above it, even though the whole thing is really neutral. That's perfectly okay while you're figuring this out. So we always name the anion with the root and the suffix ide, so it becomes chloride, and you just read left to right, calcium chloride. So shall we do a few of these? Ready? What's this? Um, Aluminum bromide. Sodium sulfate. Not sulfate, sulfide. Sulfate, the eights have oxygen. So how do we know this is sodium? Well. We look right there. We already know sodium chloride, so we knew this was a sodium ion. Um, by the way, what's the charge on sulfide? You can tell just by looking, without looking at your periodic chart. You can tell by looking here. Okay, we always write the positive first. It's got to be negative. Why do you think it's two? You're right. Tina, right? You said it? I thought I saw your mouth move. Why? And sodium is, say it louder. Correct. Sodium is in group one. There are two of them. So the, po the positive charge on this formula unit is positive two from sodium to the two sodium. So that means sulfide negative two has to be negative two so that the whole thing is neutral. So yeah, that's sodium sulfide. How about this guy? Mg. So what's the charge on these guys? Well, you have to look at the periodic chart, because it could be one and one, right? You couldn't tell where, what group is magnesium in. 
It's group two, so it's positive two. And that means oxide is also, it's negative, but it's also two. Yusuf, you have a question? Is eight and acid? Uh, we'll, we'll hold off on that, okay? Let's just finish this up. Barium. Not iodine. Iodide. Let's just finish this up. Potassium. What is the charge on each of these? Positive one and negative one. Chloride is always negative one. CS, cesium, this one's tough. Nitride, not nitrogen, nitride, it's the ion. And finally, this one's hard, it's called cyanide, so sodium, sodium cyanide, good.